Ah, game collecting. I bloody love game collecting. But how do you guys actually show off your collection? Do you do it by release order, alphabetically, or was you like me and decided to put them into code order? Until you realised that wasn't going to work. And why is that? Well, as you can see here, we have them in alphabetic order. This is my very small Mega Drive Japanese collection. Uh, you've got Aladdin at the very beginning, all the way up to Wrestle War at the end. And the reason I don't put them in code order is because it messes with my OCD. Allow me to demonstrate. G4001 is Altered Beast, G4002 is Space Harrier 2, G4003 is Super Thunder Blade, G4004 is Alex Kidd in the Enchanted Castle, G4005 is uh, this, G4006 is Super League Baseball. Uh, there's a reason I've got this one. You'll see soon, you'll see soon. But when you try and get your hands on a copy of G4007, it's not impossible, but it's practically impossible. It's such a hard game to find that at one point, even Sega denied its existence. But it does indeed exist because inside Super League Baseball, if we open up the manual, you will see right at the end upcoming games such as Space Harrier 2, Super Thunder Blade, Altered Beast, that one I couldn't pronounce earlier, and it's Kidney Enchanted Castle, Fantasy Star 2, which actually came out one day before this one, and the upcoming game, Tetris. Let's find out exactly what happened. Here it is folks, proof that Tetris does indeed exist, or at least did to a degree. But why all of the secrecy, Sega? Why do less than 10 but more than 5 copies of this game exist nowadays? It's just Tetris, and not the greatest Tetris either. Well, that's what we're going to discuss today. Hi everybody, I'm DJ Slope from Slope's Game Room, and this is the story of Mega Drive's rarest game, Tetris. Tetris didn't start on the Mega Drive, far from it. If we're going to go back to the beginning, then we really need to look at the 1984 version built for Russian Electronica 60 terminals. It was created by Alexei Pudzhenov, and although I don't plan to take on the gaming historian today, what I will say is that this game became quite important. I mean, obviously it did. Tetris was huge, and only a few years later, the first commercially released titles by Mirosoft under the license of Andromeda came out and Sega came in only one year after this in 1998 with their first version called Tetris, but for the arcades. Now, the whole Mirosoft thing was a mix-up from the get-go. Robert Stein of Andromeda had secured the rights, or at least he had believed he secured the rights, after making a deal with Pudzhenov and the Soviet Soviet Academy, where he created the game directly. He then went to Mirosoft, who went ahead and accepted his offer to release it. This all went skew with, however, when Elorg, the Soviet Ministry of Software, got involved and put one of those annoying L-shaped pieces into the works, stating that they wasn't included in the trade deal, and poor old Robert Stein had to renegotiate, which he did, and thankfully for him, he got the rights approved for the home computer ports. Now, from here we get the console versions, and that's when Atari came in. Atari was contracted by Mirosoft and the deal was signed. But Mirosoft also didn't own the rights, even though they believed that they did. Regardless, this rabbit hole just gets deeper and deeper with quite a few different companies trying to grab a piece of the action and Elog running around trying to clean up the mess. Again, I highly suggest looking into the deep dive that Norm, the gaming historian, put out not that long ago. It's seriously a brilliant watch. But for now, all you need to know is that Atari didn't just attempt to release Tetris for the NES under their 10 gen brand before the mighty suits at Nintendo stepped in to put a stop to that, but they did actually release the arcade version as an upgrade kit, but only in Western territories. 
As for Japan, well, those rights were handed over to Sega, and here we are. Two versions of the same game released for the arcades by two different companies. So, as you can see, both versions actually look quite a bit different. Atari's version is set up for you to clear a certain amount of blocks before moving on to the next stage where you need to remove more and more getting faster and harder. It also doesn't have the ability to shoot your bricks down after pressing up and you can't slide your bricks around when they land but most importantly for this version is the ability to take on your opponent in a two player mode. As far as Tetris games go, you could do a lot worse, it's a pretty solid game. And as for Sega's rendition, well, it's not too different. You only have one directional spin sadly, but you do have the ability to speed up the descent by pressing down on the joypad. Something that many believe is actually better than the sudden placement by pressing up, as this way you're not going to accidentally place your bricks in the wrong place. Also, something that's very, um... 80s arcade-like is the pictures taken from around the world in the background. Every time you go up a level, the background changes similar, I suppose, to, I don't know, the awesome Luminaires games. The music isn't your standard Tetris music, but it's pretty good, and fun fact, one of those tunes even ended up in the Master System version of Columns. Oh, and one final thing, when left alone and the game went into attract mode, you actually saw the game's, um, sort of mascot. A monkey. This game came out in 1988 in Japan, and being that it was Japan, and you know the incredibly addictive gameplay that is Tetris, arcade goers became quite interested in this cabinet, and it did very, very well. Hang on a minute. 1988? Isn't that the exact same year that the Mega Drive was released? Why, yes it was! And with Sega being Sega, they decided to port this, yet another arcade game, to the system. And voila, Tetris for the Mega Drive was released at some point in 1989. And just like Tengen's attempt to bring their version of Tetris to the NES, Sega was also stopped dead in their tracks and it's believed that less than 10 copies exist, making it the rarest Mega Drive game ever released, with one signed copy reportedly being sold for $1 million. Obviously with this simply being a Tetris game, it actually doesn't play that much different to the arcade, however for the absolute closest version you will actually need to go get yourself the Megatech system release, which basically is yet again exactly the same and Sega got away with this as they still had the authorization to release Tetris arcade games. And that is why this game is so incredibly rare. The more you know, right? The whole Sega ignoring its existence makes a lot more sense now, and as the years went on, Tetris became a huge staple for Nintendo, being literally the perfect game for the Game Boy. And Steve Hanawa, who was responsible for showing Tetris to Sega, ended up discovering columns. And on the home consoles at least, Sega became known for the jewel destroying free em up instead. However, in the arcades, yep, Sega owned Tetris. Anyway, I suppose that's the end of Tetris for Sega, right? <laughs> no, no, no. This is volume 28 of the Sega Ages 2500 line, and it officially includes not only the original arcade, but also the Mega Drive ROM too. But that's still not all. The Tetris company not long after the uh, <laughs> release of the Mega Drive game put in some ground rules for future Tetris games and this version also includes a slight reimagining of the original with these updates included. But on top of that you also got the Sega System E hardware version. Yet another arcade port and the arcade and unreleased Mega Drive version of another Tetris ripoff called Flashpoint. And yet another free arcade ports of another Tetris ripoff called Block Seed. <sighs> Talk about milking the Tetris cow, right? Sega had the rights and they bloody made sure that they used them. In Flashpoint, instead of removing as many lines as possible, you need to remove certain flashing blocks instead, and in Block Seed, you essentially play Tetris with power-ups included to mix up the gameplay. <sighs> Ugh. 
So there you have it guys. Tetris, the game that Sega didn't want you to know existed until they was ready to let you know that it existed. It does indeed exist and it's the reason I'm never going to put my games in code order. No. No, 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 no. Well, that is unless I become extremely rich. Or I buy a reproduction, of course. And by the way, guys, G4008, that doesn't exist either. But more on that another time. Hey there guys, thanks for checking out the video. I want to give a big special shout out to all of my Patreons. But first, an extra big shout out goes to this video's sponsor, Player One Clothing. Be sure to go and check out their websites for all of your video game and movie related garments. But anyway, back to those Patreons of a big extra, big extra, big shout out going to that retro video gamer, Gary Pinkett, Mantis, Ryan Burford, Andrew Dalton, Ben Jackson, Jonathan Hayward, Christopher Turnbull, Phil Lowell, Tomek Rabowski, Mr. Vestek, Michael Corvin, Josh, Dina, Robertson Dunn, Lefty, Intrigued Gaming, Abby Morris, Tim LaBonte, Asobi Quang DX, Tim Lunn, Hananas, Pixels.Limited, aka Samuel Victor, Red the Beard, Conrad Constantine, Pretendo64, Creamy Elephant, Casey Garner, Blitz Hedgy, King Link Reviews, Gemma Mr. T Shirts, and Dan Petit, Prime Time Penny Sleeve, Mike H. Fell, Lucas Softel, Yeo Hamburglar, Gregory Arden, Ronnie Method, SSWB, Solid Capture, Jeremy Rodriguez, Nick Pollard, Bram Perez, Marcus Kima, Cat Tindall, June, The Geeky Dad, Richard Carter, aka Fantastic Dizzy, Todd Paul Float G, and of course, Petty Mew. If you want to get your name shouted out, come see what I'm working on and see lots of upcoming videos and ideas and all this other stuff, then please, you know, click the link that you see on the screen. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, a thumbs down, whatever you prefer. And for all those people that continue to share my stuff over on social media, platforms and places like reddit a massive thumbs up to you too but anyway that's enough for now this is dj slope signing out and hopefully i'll see you all next time